I'm very thankful that I get this opportunity and I need to welcome everyone in the auditorium and everyone listening online. Happy Mother's Day. And as we begin, I'd like to just pray. Lord, I thank you so much for this opportunity to be able to talk to these people. Lord, I, I'm no one special. I'm just a vessel in your hands. And I pray that today that the things that you're doing in me and working out in my life, that it will help these people here today. God, that they will allow your voice to speak to them as I share. Maybe they'll hear nothing that I actually say, but they'll hear you talking to them today. And, and that's what I want more than anything, is just for them to spend time with you and know you more. God, thank you for what you're going to do. May there be less of me and so much more of you. God, we love you so much. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> so I'm super... Glad that I get this opportunity, although I wasn't yesterday because it was nerve-wracking, but, <laughs> um, but I'm here today. And um, to be honest, the messages on Mother's Day are really, really emotional for me, and usually I cry a bunch, and so one, one woman went home in between services and came back, and her husband had said, so how many times did Pastor Julie cry today? So I actually made it through the first service pretty good, but we'll see how I do this time. Um, Pastor Jeremy started last week talking about rest, and um, from Psalms 127, we see on the screen it says 127. Um, the verse that he shared was about building the house, and that those... Um, the workers' work is in vain if it's not the Lord who's building the house. And we see the cross in the center. And we need to think about who's holding the blueprints to our lives. Are we allowing God to work out what he wants in us? Or are we asking him to bless the plans that we have? Are, are we praying more than we're, than we're planning? Or are we trying to do all the planning ourselves? In verse 3 of Psalms 127, it says, "'Children are a gift from the Lord.'" And it goes on to talk about how children are like arrows and the joy of having a quiver full of arrows. So somehow God connects rest with having lots of kids and raising lots of children. I'm not really sure about all this. So <laughs> if you're a parent or not, I pray that God will help you learn about his rest today because he really loves you. And if you don't have children don't worry. God has a really big assignment for you too. So hold on and just grab onto everything God has for you today because he wants to use each and every one of you and he wants you to know how very loved you are. Um, this is, I think, the sixth year that I've been able to stand before you since um, we launched our church. Um, as soon as we, I'm just going to give you a little history of me in case you don't know all about me. Um, we planted our church in 2010, and um, we had actually been trying for a while to have another child. Our very first child, Brianna, came to us through adoption, and she is now 12. Oh, that's so weird. And, <laughs> and then shortly thereafter, Bethany came along um, in 2006, but from 2006 to 2011, we were like, okay, God, we were thinking about having more kids, but evidently you had a different plan. And so then we started planning a church, and then we started having kids. It was like, oh, God wants to help us grow this church. Awesome. Um, so uh, in 2012, Becca was almost a year old, and I was able to share my first message, Mother's Day message. And then a year later, um, in 2013, I was pregnant with Bella. And our story of Bella is that at around 12 weeks gestation, we found out that she had trisomy 18, which is pretty much 100% fatal um, genetic disorder. And we prayed and we fasted and we sought God. And you guys that knew us then, you prayed with us and we believe God for great things. But Bella Miracle's miracle is that she's now in heaven. And so that year was extremely emotional for me um, on that Mother's Day. And the year following was difficult because we were approaching the one year anniversary of her going to heaven. 
and I was very emotional about that. And at the time, I was also starting to think, okay, God, do you want us to have any more children? I don't really know if I could handle having another child. After going through all that, the fear that gripped me of trying to have another baby was super intense. And I didn't really know if I could do it. And I was wrestling with God about it, talking to my mom, talking to my friends, saying, what, what do you think? Should we even try this? Is this, is this silly? You know, do, we have enough kids, I guess. I mean, do we really need to have any more kids? So unbeknownst to me, some of you were praying <laughs> and um, don't ask the prayer team to pray for you unless you really want the prayer answered. I'm just saying. Um, then before we even had a chance to decide, well, Benjamin already was. So <laughs> we were slightly surprised and God has gifted us with a beautiful little boy and he just turned two and we're so thankful for him. He's often been called a little piece of heaven. But through the pain of all of it, um, you know, Benjamin has not replaced Bella in any way. And God, in his, the healing that he's doing in my life, is showing me that I can miss Bella and long for her and one day rejoice in being with her in heaven um, and, and still love Benjamin just as much without him having to be a replacement of her in any way. That God has just given me this gift. And, you know, God keeps on giving us gifts of various kinds. And we've got to have eyes to see them and ears to hear them and hearts to accept what God is trying to give to us because he loves us so much as he gives us good gifts. <clears throat> um, so then last year I shared with you about um, just God being that good shepherd and being able to hear his voice and listening to him and you know, as, as I've wrestled through the emotional healing of, of going through all these things as a mom, it has, it has been, you know, difficult. And, you know, there's been that year um, right after I had had Benjamin, because he was born in April and then I shared in Mother's Day in May, I was so sleep deprived. <laughs> and somehow, God, God just in his mercy allows me to come and share what he's putting on my heart and it's really not me it's all about him so um, this is really like a lifetime that we're walking together it's not really a one little message that I'm sharing with you right now but this is this is a culmination of all the things that God is doing and it's been kind of busy and there's been a lot going on so I think right now will be an awesome time to talk about rest how about you <laughs> Okay, so as we continue in this series on rest, um, and we talked about what Jeremy shared last week in Psalms 127, 1, it is, we're going to go to verse 2. So I drew a picture. Um, the other week I was stuck in the airport for a little while going to visit my mom, and so I, I really wanted to think more about my message. Um, but I, So I kind of drew out what I was feeling and what I was thinking. And the verse says, It is useless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night, anxiously working for food to eat, for God gives rest. To, the, to his loved ones. We are his loved ones. And he wants to give us rest. With the kids in the back, um, if you've been back there right now, we're doing a series with cars for the rest stop series. And so the kids have to walk through a car wash to get into children's church right now. And we're thinking about the idea of washing in God's word every day. And so as you wash, you can use this method of Bible study called the SOAP method. So you need SOAP to wash with. And um, SOAP stands for, S is for the scripture. So you read the scripture, and then O, you make some ob observations about what you've read. And then there's the application of how you can apply it to your life. And then P is for prayer. So you pray about the scripture that, um, and, and what God is talking to you about it. So you will put it into practice in your life. So on this passage, I want to just talk about the things that I observed as I read it. The word useless in my picture you see is like really big. And I don't know about you, but I don't ever want to be called useless. I mean, useless is kind of 
a harsh word. And sometimes the things that I do feel useless, the piles of laundry, and with all the kids I have, I have lots of piles of laundry. And so thankful for my mother-in-law because she helps me with that sometimes. But it feels useless because as soon as you get it done, there's another pile. <laughs> it's like, what just happened? Why do you guys keep wearing all these clothes? And, <laughs> and so it feels useless to keep doing this work day after day, night after night. There's so much that needs to be done. But God doesn't want us to be useless. He says it's useless for you to work so hard. And I put the lines by it. It's just like, it's a struggle. It's, there's things that we go through that are hard. And, and it, it, sometimes it hurts really deep. And there's struggle through the things that we do. We work from early morning until late at night. And my big sun and moon, it just feels like it's all overwhelming, all encompassing, taking up everything. And anxiously, man, I don't know about you, but it feels like everybody's anxious about something. There seems to be so many people that are suffering from mood disorders with depression or anxiety. It's a real problem. There's so much anxiousness in our, in our world today. So we work anxiously for working hard for the food to eat. But God gives rest to his loved ones. He gives us rest. And I don't know if you can see my little rest word, but I put a cross as the T and, and a heart for loved ones. God loves us so, so much. And he wants you to know that today. And he wants you to experience his rest. Um, So last week, if you really took inventory of your life and you asked, who's building my house? Am I the one in charge or am I letting God be in control? Um, you know, if, if you are, are realizing you really need to let God have that control, then today let's really grab on to this truth of how much God loves us and the gifts that he has for us in rest. If you feel overwhelmed and tired and you've said, I can't live this way anymore, which I think I've said a few times, then today let's experience his rest. The opposite of anxiety is peace. So here's the slogan for the day that sums up my observation of scripture. If you want to say it, repeat it after me, the amount of peace I live in, the amount of peace I live in shows how much of God's love I believe in. So we can say we know God loves us. We can say Jesus loves me, this I know. And we can know that Jesus loves us. We can, we can read it. We can, we can say, yeah, I know, God loves me. But if we're not walking in the peace that surpasses all understanding, then we don't really believe he loves us. We had to believe it at the core of who we are and so that it changes who we are, so that we live differently, so we're not walking in anxiety and fear, but that we're walking in his peace. Um, to be honest, this is a real struggle for me. As we go into applying this to our lives, I need it as much as probably most of you do. We live in such a busy society and trying to find time to be still and rest is very difficult. Um, there's days that I, I just feel like the circumstances around me are so hard. I just want to throw in the towel. I just get tired. I get so tired and I want to quit. I don't know about you. But do the people in your life sometimes make loving them or God hard for you? Do you wish you could wake up and be somewhere else? Do you wonder where God is in this crazy life? Do you then feel a little bit crazy for having those thoughts and feel guilt and shame that you even feel that way? I'm so glad that God loves us enough that we can be real with him. That we can be honest with him and tell him how we really feel. He has been through our pain and he has been through even worse. And the Bible says that he sympathizes with our weakness. I started writing about the idea of busyness back in January. You know, Pastor Jeremy plans his messages um, almost a year out in advance. So I knew that the topic 
for um, over Mother's Day during the series was going to be rest. So I was thinking a lot about that. And Pastor Amy and I are taking a sabbatical this summer, which is all about rest. And, um, and just trying to understand God's rest more and figure out how to deal with all the busyness and anxiety and stress that comes in this life. So I wrote um, this little bit about busyness as I was just journaling and, and thinking and I'd um, been to a conference and I'd also read a book called Present Over Perfect by Shauna Nyquist and um, because my struggle has been with perfectionism and it's taken a lot of dark turns and I'm really desperate to learn to live in God's love and grace and his forgiveness rather than serving a God who um, Pastor Jeremy talked several um, a month or so ago about how sometimes we s serve a God that's not the one true God. We don't realize that we're labeling God as something different. So I don't want to serve the God, the false God that hates you every time you make a mistake and has no grace for your imperfections and never forgives, let alone um, forgive your sin or forgive your mistakes. God loves us so much. And when we start feeling like God doesn't love us, we're not looking at the real God. We're, we're looking to something else that man has made and created that, that we need to get past and we need to look to the God who loves us so much. So here's, a, here's what I wrote. It's titled, Busy is Just a Feeling. Learning to Live a Full and Present Lifestyle, Rich in Relationship. My biggest regret in life is that I've held on to disappointment like a best friend. Literally, I spend most of my time with her, that's disappointment, and share nearly all my thoughts and feelings with her. I invite Miss Disappointment to every activity, dinner party, vacation, every family time, and for years I've hated this feeling of busy, and I don't have time for anything. Yes, I have a lot to do. My four kids, husband, extended family, and church family make my life very full. And I never cease from activity. I have learned how, but I have not learned how to really rest. It seems that sickness and extreme crisis are the only things to get me to just stop for a minute and think, wow, I really need to plan that R&R. &R. But then I go through it and I'm on the other side of whatever crisis it was and the notion that seemed like a really good idea gets lost in things that I should be doing. All the shoulds and coulds and woulds, they keep me feeling so busy that I can't stop. Even though I invite disappointment everywhere I go, it seems like I can avoid the pain of disappointment if I keep the feeling of busy in between me and her. Without really understanding what I was doing, I got hooked on being busy. The addiction has isolated me as I have tried to insulate myself from the pain of Miss Disappointment. Miss Disappointment has not been a healthy friendship. She is extremely abusive, and our relationship has been toxic to say the least. I tell myself this relationship needs to end, but she enables my addiction to busy. Then there are days that she brings her friends over to hang out, and I'm running around trying to to not feel the pain of this relationship that I can't seem to leave, and her friends make me think that I can't live without her. Her BFF rejection and her twin failure are my least favorite. They all tell me how stupid I am and how pointless my life is. Why do I listen? I know the things they say are either twisting the truth or just flat out lies. Yet instead of treating the issue, going to God for healing at the root cause, I pop in some more activities so I can feel busy. Time after time, I use busy like Tylenol. Instead of finding out the real problem, like why do I have a fever, I just want the pain to be eased enough to keep on going. Like when I'm so tired, I know I can't sit down or I'll be out for the count. So I just keep going and I throw up some prayers hoping God will bless all this busy. Maybe you're saying to yourself, I'm way too busy to have those crazy thoughts. Are you sure? For me, being easily frustrated when things don't follow my plan or those around me don't do things in the most effective fashion have been a warning signal. It's like your check engine light. Mine seems like it's been on so long, it's about to burn out. You know that if that light stays on too long, a lot more things can go wrong. There's an urgency inside of me that if I don't fix this problem, wait, stop, that is the problem. I can't fix this problem. 
I need to stop and I need to take myself to the mechanic. I have to go get fixed by the one who made me. Fixing myself hasn't worked. It just leads to this addiction of being busy. So I'm on a journey back to what I was created for. God didn't form this body and give me a soul that I could just busy myself with tasks for 70, 90 years or even less if I'm too stressed about busy. He created me and he created you to have relationships. I'm ready to surrender my addiction to busy so that I can live a life full and, and present, a life rich in relationships. Maybe you struggle like I do with disappointment, unmet expectations, fear of failure. Maybe you feel like everything you are doing is so essential to your success and you just can't slow down. If you just work harder, stay up later, do more, put in more hours, make more money, get a dependable car. Pastor Jeremy talked about that circumstantial living that you say, oh, I would just be happy if I had this or if I had that, if I could go buy some new clothes or have different decorations or if my kids would pick up after themselves or if my husband just could understand me. We have all these things. Man, if I could just have kids or if I could just get these kids to grow up and move out, then I could be happy. We, we try to live by circumstances and although things... Uh, and people have a huge influence over that momentary feeling. The truth is that we only can be truly happy if we understand and accept God's love. We will never experience true rest until we have that question settled. Does God really love me? And then we have to live out of that love he has for us. So say the slogan with me again for today. The amount of peace... I live in shows how much of God's love I believe in. Okay, let's wake you up a little bit. If we were in kids church, I'd make you stand up. But let you can repeat after me because that sounds like it'll be easier. But let's say it really loud and see if the kids can hear us. Can you do that with me? Okay, here we go. The amount of peace I live in shows how much of God's love I believe in. Good job, good job. <laughs> That's my shameless plug. Okay, so are you familiar with the story of Noah? I mean, there's been a lot of movies made about Noah. Noah has not gone unnoticed. Not that most of those movies are even remotely biblical, but... Um, <laughs> But Noah, Noah's story, I mean, we like to think of it as more fictitious than fact. But it's an important part of God's story. It's in his book. And we know that it's not the normal Mother's Day story. But I just want to think about his life. And um, God, God did something really special with Noah and his family. And God has something really special for each of us. You know, no matter how much you read the Bible you can always learn something new. The Bible is living and active. It says so in the Bible. And, and it, it can tell you something different each time that you read it. You will see something different. God will use it to speak to you something different. So you can't ever get bored of the Bible. Um, God really, really wants to use his word to speak to you every single day. So he said it's so important to wash in the word every day. Um, I have been, I've Listen to Bible stories since I was a little kid. I gave my heart to the Lord when I was just four years old after my mom read me a Bible story. And I, I love the Bible. My mom gave me a passion for loving the Bible. And when I was in fourth and fifth grade in the STARS girls program at my church, which we have Miss Annette here, <laughs> um, uh, we... I read the entire Bible in fourth and fifth grade. And then I went on and went to Bible college and got a BA in Bible and in children's ministry. And then I went to seminary and I went for counseling but also took lots more Bible classes. So I have studied the Bible a whole bunch. And, um, and studying the Bible... There's sometimes things that I forget that I've heard, or I don't know if I've ever heard before, but I was in my mom's Sunday school class back in February when I got to visit her, and um, he was talking about Noah, and he said that Noah's name actually means rest. Did anyone know that? 
I didn't, I didn't even realize that. But earlier in Genesis, um, it talks about his father naming him. And, 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 and it's the actual translation of the Hebrew word. It means rest. And so thinking about Noah meaning rest and thinking about all the things that his family went through. All I can think of is the to-do list. I mean, can you imagine all the supplies that needed to be acquired, all the food for the animals, the animals? I mean, oh my goodness, I think my life is busy. That seems like a massive undertaking, but God wanted to, to give rest to the world because there was so much unrest. There was so much sin. They weren't really just pinching each other. There was so much evil in this world and, and God, God wanted to bring rest. And so he asked Noah to do a really big job and I think about, I like to put myself into the Bible story and, and think about the characters and how they would feel and what might be going through their mind. So I just thought, what would Noah's wife be thinking about as God gave them this big job to do? And how would she feel when people were making fun of her husband and calling him crazy and, and all the things that go into that? But the Bible tells us clearly why um, God was able to use Noah in this way. Genesis 6-9 says, Noah was a righteous man, the only blameless person living on the earth at the time, and he walked in close fellowship with God. So that's how he did it. He was in close fellowship with God. There was so much unrest and sin on the earth, yet without waiting for something to happen so that he could then trust God, Noah walked in a close relationship with him. Psalms 18.35 says, You protect me with salvation armor. You hold me up with a firm hand. Caress me with your gentle ways, Lord. So you have to be near God to know he is gentle in this sin-torn world. Our world is not on a path to getting better. But if we're going to navigate through this life and help the next generation succeed in living a godly life in this sin-torn world, we have to be in close fellowship with God. So Noah was able to enter rest by going onto the ark. The ark was a place of rest and safety and protection for his family. Um, and to top all of that off, God made a covenant with Noah that we still see on a rainy day with the rainbow. And may that rainbow, the next time that you see a rainbow, be a reminder to you that God loves you. He didn't just make the covenant with Noah. He made it with all of us. He doesn't want to destroy us. He loves us. And he puts it in the sky to remind us that he desires a relationship with us. In a study published in 2007, 60% of Christians said yes when they were asked if the busyness of life gets in the way of developing their relationship with God. That means 6 in 10 Christians said they're too busy for God. Am I too busy for God? Are you too busy for God? Dr. Michael Ziegler, who conducted the study, said, the accelerated pace and activity level of modern day distracts us from God and separates us from the abundant joy, victorious life that he desires for us. In a book that I'm reading called Not So Fast by Ann Croker, she says, the hurried life loses its rhythm. It just pushes and pushes with no pauses, leaving barren souls cluttered with activity but emptied of meaning. Do you feel anxious about your life, about your family? Do you stay busy working long hours, filling your days with activities? Maybe you're so anxious that you can't even get out of bed, and so then you're too busy sleeping to spend time with God. Or maybe, we're probably all guilty of this one, we're too busy watching Netflix or TV to spend time with God. Binging on anything is not usually good for us. And why do we avoid time with God when he is the one thing that brings real rest? He brings refreshing and he brings us energy. I've never ever heard anyone say, I've been binge reading my Bible this week. Um, <laughs> but it's strange that we try to keep ourselves 
from spending that time with God and we insulate us. But most of us don't want to face ourselves. We don't want to reflect on what's going on in our lives. We want to just keep on going. We don't want to think about if we're displeasing God or doing things that offend people. We, we don't feel righteous or blameless, so we don't feel like we can even go to him. But Jesus came and paid the price. He paid the price for our sins and he covers over our unrighteousness. If you've crossed a line into a relationship with God, then he has moved your sin as far as the east is from the west. You don't have to avoid him. He wants to be with you. He wants to spend time with you because he loves you. And he wants you to be with him every single day. Not because he doesn't know what you're doing. and You don't have to tell him everything because he needs to hear it. But we need to tell him so that we know we're in good relationship with him. The Bible says that he loves us so much and if we draw near to God, he will draw near to us. So let's say our slogan again. The amount of peace I live in shows how much of God's love I believe in. You guys are doing awesome now. This isn't a head knowledge of his love. It's an abiding presence of God so that you feel peace. Because at the core of who you are, you really know that you are loved. It's like the security of a family that's healthy and loving. So today, as I get ready to close, Becca and Bethany are going to come and do a dance for you to the song, I Will Trust in You. This is, this is really my Mother's Day present that I'm just sharing with you. But as they dance, I want you to just talk to God and ask him, what is one way that in this next week, this next month, what one thing can you do very intentionally to spend more time with God? What can you do to push out the busy and let God have a big piece of your life? So many times we try to put God into the pie. Like, this is my church and God time. This is my sports time. This is my education time. This is my work time. This is, we try to put him as a slice of our pie. But really, we need to let him into every single part of our life. So today, um, I want you to think about the ways that you can spend with God. You can journal. You can find scriptures that have to do with things that you're struggling with and memorize them. Get them in your heart. You can use the soap method to wash in God's word, read scripture, make observations, think of applications, pray that God will help you live it out. Fill your home, your car with worship music. Sing songs of praise to him and spend time praying and talking to him just like he's your best friend. So ask God right now as they dance, what's one way you can spend more time with him? Letting go of every single one down at your feet Every moment of my wandering Never changes what you see I've tried to win this war, I confess My hands are weary, I need your rest Mighty warrior, king of Tomorrow brings It's not a day yet You have not seen us So in all things Be my life and bread I want what you want, Lord And nothing less When you don't move the mountains I'm needing you to move When you don't part the waters I wish I could walk 
you girls so much. Um, so let's just recap. Psalms 127.2 said, It is useless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night, anxiously working for food to eat. For God gives rest to his loved ones. You are his loved ones. When you start to get so busy and anxious, go binge on some God time. Spend time in his word. Spend time in his presence because he loves you so, so much. It's the only way to find true rest. Don't let your relationship with God starve. Feed it. Water it. Let it grow. God wants you to bloom wherever you're planted. Whatever circumstances you're in, no matter where you go, there you are. So bloom where you're planted. Could you bow your heads and pray with me today? Lord, I thank you so much that you love us. That you sent your son to pay the price for our sin so that we can walk in close fellowship with you. So that we can know you. So that we can experience your love. God, that you want to give us a little piece of heaven here on earth as we spend time in your presence. We will experience the joy of knowing you. So Lord, I pray if there's anyone in this room that has not crossed the line into a relationship with you and they need to make that decision right now, if you're pulling on their hearts right now, God, I pray that they would make that choice to know you, to find your rest, to find your peace and be in close relationship with you. Thank you that you came and that you said that if anyone believes in their heart that you are Lord and that you were raised from the dead, that they would be saved if they confess that. God, I pray that um, if someone here is starting that journey with you, that they will tell a friend, that they would um, talk to Pastor Jeremy or I, God, that they would begin to grow that relationship with you. So, Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for every mother and woman in this room. You know where each of us are, and I pray that you would take us the next step closer to you this week. God, that we would truly be in your rest, live in your peace, and know how deeply we are loved by you. Thank you for what you're going to do in our lives. In your name I pray. Amen.